Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Life Stories. Thank you for being a part of the show today. The subject are females that have for years been scarred by the moments that they went through or that they were faced with when they were subjected to torture in totality by Joseph Corney and his rebel group in the Lord's Resistance Army War. It's one thing to know that a part of the country is experiencing war. It's another thing altogether to meet face to face with those that have lived through it. Heart-wrenching to say the least. Jennifer, how did you get into Connie's clothes? I remember it was in 1996 that it was in February the 8th. I was sleeping at home at my grandmother's home when the rebels came at night and one of them called me by name saying, Amon, get out. And I'd wondered who was calling me by name. I only realized later that one of them was our neighbor who had called me to get out of the house. When they asked me to come out, they asked me whether I was Amon Jennifer. I denied it and I told them I'm Lamwaka Christine. Then they called this young man who had directed them to our home and they asked him what is her name. The man repeated I was called Amon Jennifer and then they asked me again. And I told them I was Lamoha Christine. That is when they started beating me for lying to them. So they asked me whether I go to school. I told them I do not go to school. They asked this young man whether I go to school. And the young man told them I actually go to school and I studied in town. They started beating me again for lying the second time. What were the major challenges for you under captivity or abduction? My most challenging moment was when I was abducted. I was given to this man and he died during the war and he left me with a pregnancy. And because I was pregnant, nobody was willing to take me on and all the other women who were wives to other soldiers did not want me thinking that I was going to be their arrival. So that was the most challenging time. I was pregnant with no husband and nobody else was willing to take me on. It was a very challenging pregnancy because I had no food to eat, nobody was willing to look after me. So I would survive by going in the bush, getting leaves and come and boil them to eat even minus salt for me to survive the pregnancy. And I ended up being swollen for a long time because I had nothing to eat apart from the leaves I was surviving on. I eventually gave birth to my child when the child was three months old. I was given to another man to become his wife. When I refused, I was given 300 lashes for disobeying that order. So Jennifer, how did you run away from Joseph Connie and his men? I came back in 2002. That was the time when UPDF went into Sudan to hunt for Kony. And so Kony decided to release the women that were very weak. And that is how I came back. Myself, I wasn't exactly sick, but I was just weak because of lack of food and I couldn't carry my child. So that was my excuse that I was also very weak and I was sick and I was eventually released. I had to give that life for me to escape and come back with the weaker women. How do you survive today, Jennifer? When I came back home, I went through a tailoring course and eventually I was taken over by Living Hope and our Toto and that is how I survive. I'm a tailor and I'm paid for it. But before I joined Living Hope, it was so hard for me. Because when I went back home, I was rejected by my parents. So I came back and started living on my own in town. I've learned to let go under Watoto. I don't think much about the past because even if I thought about it, I would only get hurt. So I've learned to live with myself. I'm comfortable and I'm moving on very well. That's nice to hear, Jennifer. I'm so sorry about what you went through at a very tender age. But just like Watoto says, there is living hope. Yes, and I thank you so much that you've chosen to live. And we thank Watoto, thank them for us so much for the rehabilitation they're doing with you and so many other people like you. You'll be fine, there's no doubt about that. Hello Florence. Hello. Mm, how are you? I'm fine. Mm, you look good. Thank you. Mm. Florence, how did you end up under Connie's 
captivity. And Kemaran Maral Pierre when we are big. I was abducted in 1995. That was in Kitgum district when they came and abducted us. We used a longer route that we had to go through hills and mountains. I know better group. But I remember it was Vincent Ortiz's group that abducted me. I was working in God. I was in the boat. I was working in God. When I was abducted, I had not realized which group had actually taken me on. But until when we started climbing those rocks, it was so hard. We had no shoes. It was raining day and night. There was no covering for us. That is when I realized that it was actually rebels because we would never stop. We kept on moving. How old were you, Florence? I was 12 years old. They are now free, finally, but only physically. The emotional, psychological, mental liberty is a long way off. How does one get over the closeness of acts committed against them? Though they smile, it is not a conclusive sign of happiness. Pain, anguish, Nightmares are a daily, almost present companion in their lives. My most challenging moment was that during that time I was abducted, there was nothing to eat. We were forced to walk long distances. Even when the rocks cut our feet, they would never allow us to stop. We had to move on. They had given us to carry some filled peas and we had to eat them raw for us to survive because there was no time for stopping, no time for cooking them. And being the first time of ever eating raw peas, it was one of my most traumatic experiences. And when it was time for resting, we children, they would, they would put us in circles where we would sleep in one big circle without any covering. I was given a luggage to carry. It was in a 10-liter jerry can and that was salt, which was so heavy. So even if the salt fell beyond the rocks, I had to slide back and get a salt for me to survive the beatings. It was so bad because I always had to survive and get the salt, put it on my head and walk and run as well. My wife And because of those heavy luggages I was carrying, I still suffer from chest pains up to now. Even when I go for medical checkup, they do not find anything wrong. But the first thing they ask me is whether whether I carried heavy loads. And I always tell them, yeah, I was once abducted and carried heavy loads. So I still walk with that pain on my chest. It is still there, unbearable. I'm so sorry about that, Florence. So how did you escape? I already had two children. By the time I escaped, they had sent us to Uganda to come and abduct more children. So I reached some village called Chwero in Gulu district where I had never been. And it was during that time that I made up my mind to escape. And that is how I ended up escaping. Florence, how did you have the children uh, in captivity? When I turned 14 in the bush, I was given to a man, and that is where I had my two children from. How do you survive today? Right now, uh, I joined Living Hope. I was second through several courses. I went through trauma empowerment, where I came to term with my past. I went through discipleship, and right now I'm a tailor, so I do that tailoring, and that is how I survive with my children. Did you run away with, with the children as well? I did. I ran away with my children. How old were you when you ran away with the children? I was around 18 or 19 years when I escaped with my two children. Do you ever get afraid that your tormentors would come back and do such damage to this community or even you yourself? I'm still afraid because I've not heard of coin being captured. So sometimes I still get afraid that one day he might just decide to return. And this time not only will I be abducted, but I'm also afraid for my children that they will also experience the same thing that I went through. Thank you, Florence, for being on the show and for giving us your story. You look so in shape. I can't believe you're in Nalongo. <laughs> but I'm happy for you about that. Despite, you know, the circumstances under which you got your children, 
I'm very happy and humbled that you know that they're your children and you care about them and you have them at heart. Yes, let's, let's all pray together that these people will not come back to do this to our country and to our lives. Thank you so much for giving us your story. These ladies never even finished primary school, but today they have chosen to study under the Watoto Living Hope Initiative. An opportunity that they absolutely love as it caters to ensuring that they are whole again. No matter how long it takes, they have been taught to read, write, tailoring and beadwork. It's been some time since the former rebel child wives were freed from their captivity that lasted more than a decade for each one of them. Their faces reveal the incredible joy of newfound freedom, but may also mask the feeling of fear for the future ahead. We have a role to play in ensuring they are safe and happy. Ours is to embrace them without judgment, show that there are some good people in the world that care, support and commit to helping each one, a lady at a time. This way, their dark days would no longer have a hold over them and then they would enjoy full liberty. In closing, it is safe to say, if our diversity does not kill you, then it can only make you stronger. And for sure, strength and grace is already at work in these ladies' lives.